Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be my TBR for the Historical Romance Readathon. I am super excited for this readathon. Um, this is hosted by Jessica from Peace Love Books, Lacey from Lacey Book Lovers, and Lisa from Remarkably Lisa. And it runs for, I believe, a full week this time. I don't have the dates in front of me, but I want to say December 6th through the 13th. So anyway, I am reading, I think, only Christmas romances this time, and I'm super excited for it. So let's go ahead and jump into my TBR. So the first book I'm going to read is One Naughty Christmas Night by Janet Berry. Um, so this is two best friends um, since childhood, and they have never had romantic feelings for each other, but they're trapped in the library of his parents' home in a very intimate situation. Um, Victoria makes a pact with Heath, so he's going to show her the ways of passion in the days leading up to Christmas, and then after it's all going to go back to the way that it was. Um, but Christmas has a way of drawing people together, and they find out that love is always in the air. This sounds fabulous. It's 100 pages, so hopefully I'll be able to get through it super quick. Um, this is counting for the prompts of green or red on the cover. That might be it. So I might skip this one and put something else with red on the cover to double up on that prompt, but I do want to read it. It sounds fabulous. We'll just see how time-wise the readathon goes for me. Okay, next is What a Lady Needs for Christmas by Grace Burroughs. Um, so to escape a scandal, Lady Joan Flynn flees her family's estate in the Scottish Highlands. She needs a husband by Christmas or the holidays will ring in nothing but ruin. Um, so ambitious mill owner Dante Hartwell offers to marry Joan because a well-born wife is his best chance of getting access to aristocratic investors. Um, as Christmas and trouble draw nearer, their marriage of convenience blossoms into unexpected intimacy, for true love often hides be beneath the most unassuming holiday wrapping. Um, this is a full-length book. This is 400 pages, so we will see, but the prompts this is going to count for are Grace Burroughs, um, new to you author, and a marriage of convenience. So... This one does count for a lot of props, so I will probably be reading that one. Then we have Deck the Halls with Love by Lorraine Heath. Lady Meredith Hargraves gave her heart to Alistair Wakefield, the Marquess, in her first season, only to have it shattered when he proposed to someone else. And now that he's free to pursue her, it doesn't matter because she's on her way to the altar. Um, he sets aside his dreams in favor of duty and honor, but as Christmas approaches, he's determined to put his own desires first and lure Lady Meredith back into his arms where she's always belonged. First he steals a dance, and then he steals a kiss. But when they find themselves in an, alone in an abandoned castle during a snowstorm, reignited passion consumes them both. Sounds fabulous. This one is counting for takes place during the winter. And maybe that's it. <laughs> so a lot of these I could probably double up on, but they just sound so good. This one is a little over 100 pages, so not too, too bad. Okay, next is All I Want for Christmas is a Duke by Valerie Bowman, Tiffany Clare, Vivian Lorette, and Ashlyn McNamara. Um, so celebrate the Christmas season with this enchanting collection of historical romances. So there's four stories. A childish prank may have reunited the Duke of Hollingsworth with his estranged wife, but only the magic of Christmas will show this couple the season of second chances. So we have a marriage in trouble, kind of second chance. Then we have Sophie Kinsley planned to remain a wallflower at the Duke of Hollyshire's ball, yet when a dance with him leads to a stolen kiss, will the Duke be willing to let her go, or will Sophie's Christmas wish be granted at last? We have to the Duke of Vale, science solves everything, even marriage. When the impossible Ivy Sutherland makes him question all of his data, he, realized that he realizes that he has overlooked a vital component in his search for the perfect match, love. And then the last one is Patience Markham never forgot the fateful dance that she had with the future Duke of Kingsbury. But when a twist of fate brings them together for Christmas Eve, will the stars finally align in their favor? This is counting for Marriage in Trouble, because there's that first story, and the Wallflower story. So I think this one I might only read those two, um, depending, again, on how time is going and my reading is going. But... Um, I definitely will be reading those two stories out of this anthology. Okay, the next book is Her Virgin Duke by Nicola Davison. So, nicknamed Humdrum Tun by society, Bennett Innsworth, Duke of Tunbury, is stuffy, awkward, and still a virgin. The festive season is looking bleak until he loses a wager and must spend an evening at London's Pleasure Club. 
Delilah Forbes has long reigned as the city's mistress of sin, and when the infamous Duke visits her club, she is soon eager to introduce him to sizzling passion. But even as less becomes more for two lonely souls, they know a Duke and a madam can't have forever after. Or can they? Um, I'm pretty sure Nicola Davison writes mostly erotica historical romance, but this sounds great. This is counting for a 2021 release and a clinch cover. Okay, then we have the Christmas cur Christmas Courtesan? Courtesan? Courtesan. I, I should know how to say this, and I don't, but that's good. By Victoria Vale. Um, Widowed Lady Miranda Hughes wants to indulge in something wicked, something she might never have dared to do as a young, unwed debutante. The rumors of male court courtesans, is that right? Um, operating secretly in London have piqued her interest, so she hires one for an illicit rendezvous during a Christmas house party. Roger Thornton's desperate desperation to provide a dowry for his sister pushes him to moonlight as a secret courtesan. Courtesan. <laughs> what begins... As a convenient affair blossoms into more as Roger and Miranda find in one another the things they have been missing. This is counting for a non-titled hero in a series. And I think that's it. Okay, next up is How the Duke Stole Christmas. This is another anthology. I do really want to read all of these because these are all fabulous authors. But the one that I will for sure be reading is Joanna Shoup's story because this is counting for the Not in Europe prompt. So Joanna Shoup's is Christmas in Central Park. Women all over America devour Mrs. Walker's weekly column for recipes and advice. No one knows Rose, the column's author, can't even boil water. When the paper's owner, Duke... Havemeyer insists that she hosts a Christmas party. She must scramble to find a husband, an empty mansion, and a cook. But Duke is not a man easily fooled, and she fears her perfect plan is failing, especially when his attentions make her feel anything but professional. Um, so that one is Counting Forward, Not in Europe, obviously, and then also a book I already own, because I do have a physical copy of that somewhere in this historical shelf. Um, I just need to find it. <laughs> Okay, next is from the anthology Have Yourself a Merry Little Secret, but I'm only reading one story, and it is The Rogue's Secretary, no, The Rogue's, Rogue's Secret by Stacey Reed and Giselle Marks. So Bachelor Lord Rupert Rogers is searching for the treasure his great uncle suggests he has left him, but finds an enemy and a bride he must convince with one kiss at a time that they are perfect for each other. So this is counting for Rogue in the title. And then the last book on my TBR is It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Scandal by Stacey Reed. This is three steamy stories all by Stacey Reed. Um, so the first one is Wicked Deeds on a Winter Night. Primrose, Markham, and Captain Gabriel Northcote cannot deny the burning hunger between them. Will a wicked night of passion on a winter's night lead to the greatest love or only to betrayal? Then we have Mistletoe and Mischief. Good intentions, a devilish viscount, and wicked misdeeds pave the road to matchmaking. Miss Callisto Middleton desires to see her mother happy, and that means using the right amount of mischief to encourage two lovers to see what is right before them. Unfortunately, Graham Viscount Sherbrooke is just as determined to rescue his father from supposing, supposed scheming ladies who want to marry into a wealthy family. First it started with a kiss, dancing under the stars, and then more kisses. Even knowing the charming rake has no serious intentions, Callie finds herself unable to stop thinking about him or his kisses. Heartbreak is certain if she follows her desires, if only he weren't so irresistible. And then last is Letters to Emily. Two years have passed since Lady Emily's beloved Maxwell went to fight in the war. With only letters and one hot night of loving to keep her warm on the coldest of nights, she tries to embrace the future after learning of his death at the Third Battle of Picardy. One way to forge forward is to marry his twin brother, a man she does not love, but one who rouses dark needs in her. He's wanted Emily from the moment he first saw her two years ago, but had watched from a distance as his brother Max charmed her into falling hopelessly in love with him. In her state of grief over Max, he ensures her needs are met, breaking down her barriers, tormenting her with wicked erotic loving, loving as he slowly binds her to him. Um, and this is counting for a lady heroine. 
the letters to Emily one is. So anyway, that is my historical romance TBR. Let me know down below what you are planning on reading for the readathon. Are you participating? And thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.